are people hoping in today? What is there to hope in? At one time, we might have been able to hope in our government institutions. We might have been able to hope in progress and things like that, but it just seems that more and more we're finding that where we were putting our hope, the, it, it was a false hope. Those people are failing us. They're letting us down. What hope do we have of the future, not just in this life, but what about in the next life? But then the final thing he says is without God in the world. That's the big problem with the unbeliever. The unbeliever is without God. They live in a world without God. And because they live in a world without God, they don't know peace. They don't know joy. They don't have any lasting contentment and they don't have any real confidence about what happens afterward. There, there's, there's no idea. You know, we've talked about this many times before and I read too many atheist things so I end up talking about atheists too much. But uh, nevertheless, you know, the atheists are, you know, they're always on their rant against people who believe in God and Christians and so forth. But you know, here's the question that I have for the atheist. Um, what's your plan? Okay, you don't like God's plan? Uh, well, could you give us a plan, something that is comparable to it or something that is better than it? And, and the reality is the honest atheists, they don't have a plan. They don't have any answers. At the end of the day, they just say, well, you know what? There aren't any answers and there is no plan. And it, we're just, it's a cold, cruel world and you just got to get used to it and you're going to die and disappear and it'll all be over. So that's it. Um, I, I don't really think that's much of an alternative, quite honestly. But that's where you go. Without God in the world, there is no hope. This is where we were. Some of you are still there, but this is where every single person is. And I emphasize that, and Paul emphasizes it here, because sometimes what we do is we make the mistake of thinking, well, yes, I could see that some people would be in a place like that, but you know, that's not where I am. I'm a good person. I do my best to be as kind and loving to people and as generous, and, and I'm really not like this. I'm not uh, this kind of a person who's under the authority of the devil or dead in trespasses and sins. That's not me. Well, it is. It's everybody. It's all of us. There, there's no middle position. There's, there's one place or the other. You're either dead in your trespasses and sins or you're alive in Christ. And there's nothing in the middle. Now, we, we mistakenly think that there's a middle ground because we, we judge people by what we see. And we look at people and we say, well, that person doesn't, they don't look like they're dead in trespasses and sins. They look like they're doing pretty good. Well, they don't look like they're under the authority of the devil. They seem to be actually looking fine. But it's because we're looking at it from a very limited point of view. You see, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. 